very excited to introduce you to Jamie Champagne, who I've had the pleasure of working with before. Uh, Jamie is beyond her passionate BA title and truly embodies business analysis and adding value to those around her every day. An accomplished speaker, author, and trainer with her book, Seven Steps to Mastering Business Analysis, and published courses on LinkedIn and Pluralsight, she enjoys helping others to bring value in their, excuse me, in all of their change efforts. When she's not collaborating with her business partners, you can find her collaborating with her friends and family on the Hawaiian waters on a surfboard. So I'll now turn it over to Jamie Champagne. Thank you, Kyle, so much. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you guys are dialing in from. I'm so excited to be here because yes, I, I have fun. I know someone always thought that was the joke. I'm a business analyst and I have fun. They're like, isn't that the joke? Like no business analyst has fun. And so, but life is meant to be fun. And even with all the changes with everything going on, I'm hoping to give you a few things to think about and how we can define fun, bring it into our work and really enjoy all that we're delivering or finding delight somewhere in all that turmoil and change and everything else going on. Because what you guys are doing is absolutely amazing. And you should own that, you should know that. So I'm gonna try to bring you that energy, bring you that excitement because today is just the starting point of amazing speakers of an amazing event that you have so much to get out of, connect, learn, grow, and just have some fun. All right, so let's get started right away. That, you know, when I talked about fun, the reason this came out is I started seeing comments like this, like Harvard Business Review, I think is where this one came from, our Business Insider. A couple of years old now, but it said 80% of people, they weren't happy. There, there was something lacking. They weren't as excited. And I was like, that's kind of frustrating to hear, you know, like I, I love what I do. I love getting into the requirements and analyzing and traceability. Yes, I am a business analyst. I have a problem. But, you know, when I was reading that, you know, I'm looking at figures that you're going to spend over 90,000 hours of your lifetime at work, doing work stuff. Like it should be fun then. You should kind of enjoy some of that. I don't know about you. That's a long time to not be having fun. You know, and looking at things since people say that 25% of employees say work is their main source of stress. Even like with everything going on, like, look at that, that's awful. All right, so we gotta bring the fun factor into this. You guys need to enjoy what you do. And so like any good, you know, analyst, when I start looking for a topic, you know, I'll go research, you know, we're gonna talk about fun. So what is fun? Okay, let's think about it. So what do I do? I go to my good friend, Google, and I go look in the Google images and say, let's go see what fun looks like. Here was the results. When I Googled fun, I got this. I feel pretty good. Look at, look at that thumbs up, get smiles, you get dancing, man, there's colors, party time. Like this is fun. You know, so like you can go, okay, well, if that's fun, we'll do the same thing, right? We'll go in and say, what's work look like? So I go in and, you know, Google work. And these were the top pictures that showed up. It's kind of like not as exciting, you know, kind of, okay. Ladies, I don't know about you, but is the color scheme here the same as your suit selections at the department store? You get three color choices, black, navy, and gray. Navy doesn't count as a color, I don't think. But like, look, it's bland. It's not as exciting as fun as all those colored images. You know, and so I was like, okay, what went from fun to work? Why, why, why this difference of a feeling emotion? Why aren't we jumping for joy when, you know, we get another project, you know, another assignment? And that I want to introduce you today to two key things. While they may not be the way you get fun every time, if these two things are lacking, it definitely makes it hard to have a good time. And I want you to think about in your work, your confidence levels 
and your trust levels. Where is confidence in you, confidence in others, confidence in groups and organizations? And where is the trust factor? Is the trust strong? Did you even think what your trust level is? Do you have to think about your trust level? Again, these two things that they're not the definition or the silver bullet to having fun at work. But if we're lacking these two things, it's really hard to have fun and get all excited to go to work. So when we talk about this, like any good analyst here, what do I do? I break these down to make them simpler. And so when I think about levels of fun, I want you to also consider now that there's the personal fun, what I think is fun, Jamie, because I know what I think of fun may not be your idea. There's the team fun. What does the team enjoy doing together? Where is their laughter? Where is their energy? And where do we see the passion come through in organizations? So let's take some time. I'm gonna go through each one of these so that you get a sense of where am I having fun and what can I do? So starting off with personal, let's think about personal fun. So of course, I'm here in Hawaii. And yes, business analysts here in Hawaii do actually work for a living. But I know what you guys are all thinking. You think this is what Jamie does every day. Well, in general, especially when going to the office, I would do this every morning. This is me grabbing a wave. This is me having fun. No, I'm not at work. I'm not at a laptop. Yeah, this is having fun a little before work, but this is how I started my day. But, you know, I thought about this because I love being on the water, paddleboarding, surfing, anything I can be doing. I love being on the water. And I thought about, well, what makes this so fun? If the personal stuff is really fun, you know, what does that translate to work, right? You know, I'm looking at this and I'm going, yeah, like, you know, someone called out, of course, and said, Jamie, look at the size of the wave. It's an ankle biter, they call it. So, you know, barely above your ankles. I went, yeah, but that was a really fun day. I had confidence. I knew what I was doing. I had confidence in the conditions, you know, to go out there with a stand-up board versus my long board or a short board. You know, there was confidence in the environment. You know, I was pretty comfortable. I had a lot of trust that day too. I trusted myself. I knew what I was doing. I wouldn't get hurt because if you get hurt in the morning, you can't go work, right? And so there was trust. I had a lot of trust with the people out there. That's my crew. I surf with the same crew every morning. And trust me, you want a little trust when that really heavy fiberglass board is coming right at you. You want to trust that they can like go around you, you know? So having some trust out there is always a good thing. Yeah, but like, this was a fun day. It was tiny, it wasn't nothing epic, you know? It, it was just, it was a great day. And I just thought about, well, my confidence levels were high. I didn't even think twice about trusting anybody, trusting myself, trusting the weatherman, you know? It was, it was just a good day, you know? And so, but then like, you know, someone shows me something like this and I'm like, ooh. I don't know about you, but I don't get so excited about it. Like, it's really cool. Don't get me wrong, right? Like you guys all think this is what I do all day long. Knowing the impact of water at like just a couple feet versus massive amounts of feet, that's a little scary. I don't have confidence and trust if you stick me in something like this. I don't have the confidence in myself that I'm gonna come to the surface fast enough. I don't have the trust in my life vest or maybe the ski to come get me when I wipe out. See, notice how I'm saying, when I wipe out, I'm not confident at all. I'm even going to make it. This is not the idea of fun for me. Just, it's fun to watch, but not fun to get into it. And so like, you know, just even that change in perception on what you think of as fun and what's not, you, know, you bring it into the workplace. Because I crack up, like, you know, I had a picture of having fun. This is fun. This is Saturday morning, 7.30 a.m., volunteering to teach a course. Not getting paid. 
taking my Saturday morning away from family, away from the surfing, away from other things to go teach, but it was a course on business analysis, project-based business analysis. I had confidence. I knew what I was talking about and I could share, I could bring it to people. I had confidence in the organization I was presenting with, how we set it up. I had trust that the attendees were coming motivated, guys. Saturday morning classes are not the most popular. You know, that I really had some trust in the environment, that things were gonna work right. You know, the technology, like how much do you trust your technology these mornings, right? Get on and test, like when I'm worried, I test like everything because my trust factor is kind. But this was a simple day. This is me having fun at work because I like the content and there was this realm of confidence and trust. You know, and I think back and I'm like looking at my smile, I'm like, okay, I'm started. Yeah, that's probably pre-caffeine. You know, and I looked at like then another picture I took when I was at Microsoft. The smile in here, if you take a look a little bit, this is the fun part, our analyst in the room. That smile's not as like super excited. That's the, you know, I tease when I smile and someone says, Jamie, come on, come in the bigger waves. And you just go, not sure what I'm doing, but okay. You just smile and nod, smile and nod. We're all very nice. Well, I was giving a talk on artificial intelligence and it was my first talk on artificial intelligence. My confidence level in me wasn't as high as I wanted to be when I walked in there, but there was a lot of trust. I had some excitement and the more trust that was shown in me, the more confidence that was shown by people showing up to the talk, by the staff members staying. Yeah, that was worse, having actual technical experts all sitting there staring at you when you're talking a semi-technical discussion. The confidence grew and the presentation began to be more fun. You know, but this is what I'm saying is, where is your confidence level? What do you need to build it up? Do you need training? Do you need practice? Do you need a friend to help you go through and set up your facilitated session once so you get comfortable in it? You know, that you build up some trust, you know, and just simply asking yourself, do I trust myself? Do I have confidence in myself? And then are people trusting in me? Do people have confidence in me? That if we ask these questions, I think sometimes just, saying them out loud and going, wow, people really do. Think about your last meeting you've done. How many people showed up? They didn't question your invite. You sent a meeting and they showed up because you invited them. Look at that amount of trust they have in you. That's, that's amazing. You know, and so again, we got to kind of maybe define fun then. You know, what is fun to you? Think about what you enjoy. What makes you smile? Is there anything you get excited about? And this gets to be a little easier personal, but we seem to be like, if we're not surfing, it's not fun at work. You know, but what is fun? How about fun was the day you got to have dress down Fridays. You got to have casual Fridays at the office. You didn't have to wear, you know, the suit and tie. Was that kind of fun? Like everyone got to walk around in jeans. I like almost missed the CEO walking past me downtown because he was in jeans and Aloha shirt. Wasn't expecting that. You know, like that's kind of fun. And you know, had a good surf session. How about I treated myself to something caffeinated? You ever gone to one of those convenience stores and get one of those really fully loaded caffeinated sugary beverages from the fountain drinks, like full of bubbles, effervescent? You know, it was a Friday. I thought like, why not have that for caffeinated drink instead of coffee? Let's go like something fun and get all the mix-ins. You know, and that morning, no meetings and I got to sit down and work on some requirements traceability. Yes, my name is Jamie and I have a problem. I'm a business analyst nerd and I love requirements traceability matrices. I love validating requirements and tracing them and building acceptance criteria. Like to me, that's exciting. I have high confidence in myself. Like to me, it, that's fun. It may not be the fun like having out with friends, but I get excited. Like I enjoy the work. When I get rolling, you're not interrupted. You're having a good time. You know, fun is what you enjoy. And yes, that day, 
I flat out took a picture because I had so much fun. We didn't have any meetings going on and I had a shared office space. I had the headphones on with my Pandora just rocking out while I was going through my requirements traceability matrix. That is the actual traceability matrix behind there if you guys are all squinting at it. But that's me, shoes up on the table because I had to sit back and go, wow, this is a good day. I was having fun at work. And, you know, again, I was just like, it's requirements, people. It's analyzing requirements. Like, seriously, but my confidence was high. I knew what I was doing. There was people trusting me to work and deliver it. My project manager was not hovering on me. She's like, you got that, right? You gonna let me know how it goes? Like she, she just wanted to know the end result. Like she didn't even care how it went. Like she's like, wow. I think my project manager actually said it's like watching paint dry when you do a facilitator requirement session. Yeah, I didn't think it was that boring, but you know, she had trusted me that she never, argue with my process, my methods, you know, that felt good. And so that's like, just all you got to think about, like personal fun. What do you enjoy? So that same piece now, let's take that to the team level, you know, because the team is big and you asking, do you have confidence in your team? Do they have confidence in you? Do you trust the team? And the biggest issue with these offsite retreats where, okay, let's think about it, guys. We're logical people, right? I'm in a room full of logical people. I don't trust you very well at work. So what does management do? They send us all off site for those retreats. And we're gonna do something called a trust fall where I don't trust you at work. So how in the world am I gonna build up trust by closing my eyes, even sometimes cr crossing my hands where I can't fly or them, and trust you to catch me. Like, I don't get how that's supposed to build trust sometimes. You know, it seems to defeat the purpose. You know, but trust, it's like a lifetime to build, a moment to break. Well, build that trust. Having fun with the team, you need that trust. We'll try it. We were trying to get the board together for a board meeting. We volunteer on boards, you know, our IIBA chapter. This is a picture of them at a place called Margaritas. But what's so cool about this picture, and I still use this today, our board has changed multiple times. That is every board member, including one remote. If you notice the guy in the blue shirt is holding up a phone. We had the entire board actually show up for a board meeting because we moved it to Margaritas. I know I think that implies something there. We got through a whole agenda early at a place called Margaritas. And then they stayed and they had some fun, some more non-work fun. But, you know, I was thinking, I was like, well, I trusted the team. And, you know, that was a key factor. No one argued about someone else's role or what they were doing. Everyone trusted everyone to show up and bring their element, talk about their pieces. You know, as a secretary, no one just checked on, is she gonna take notes or meeting minutes? But she was ready to go. You know, there was confidence that I had the right team. We had passionate people. These were people invested and that would work. You know, and it was as simple as changing it to margaritas. You know, and yes, they, I think, had some margaritas on there. But I got to dig out early and go to my family. We had the board meeting done. It was great. But that was all we needed for fun. We weren't playing games and, you know, roughhousing the office or, you know, keeping tally and score on the leaderboard. Though make sure you can do that in the app because, you know, there's good prizes. You know, that what is fun at work if something, it's not as much exciting to do the work and the team has a heavy lifting, Show that you guys trust each other. Show that you're real, especially in virtual environments. I love the idea that, you know, start your meeting off with your team, like pick an icebreaker on Fridays, fun Fridays. Something as simple as everyone take a picture of the shoes they're currently wearing. I actually saved this because this was how I had a little fun at a conference. Ladies, instead of those heels for like, you know, 16 hours, I put on some fun shoes. I had the full business suit on with some fun shoes. But think about it. Ask your virtual team right now to take a picture of their feet and that's their profile pic. Now, no one has to worry about sharing videos. So those who aren't comfortable, those who aren't confident or trusting in video, 
Maybe they'll trust the picture of their feet, kind of benign. A little more fun. Interesting to see who's wearing socks, house slippers, someone actually have shoes on, someone's out in the backyard, so they got bare feet on the grass. You know, but it brings that element in there where you say, I trust you guys. It's about the work we're producing. It's about the team. And you know that, think about the team. Where are they comfortable? Where are they confident in what they use? If they like using post-it notes, let them use post-it notes. You can use virtual post-it notes. Maybe it's not the way you might collect them, but if it builds their confidence up in participating, you know, the, any of that planning work, I'm sure on your meetings, you're sending people how to log in and how to test things prior. So you have a good session, you know, have some fun with what you're doing or create that environment so fun can emerge. So people can enjoy what they're doing that let them play with post-its. I know my poor child, that's her, her first toys are post-its. No, she did not get Sharpies yet. We got the washable markers. Those are in play, but no Sharpies yet. So I promise you that. But if you're confident in using real world post-its, give them real world, give them virtual post-its, build their confidence up. Have people work on delivering more so trust is delivered more. Because then it gets to be enjoyable, it gets to be exciting what they're delivering. And that can make the team have a lot more fun. And so with thinking through the team, let's take it to the organizational level. How many of you guys think that organize, your organization is fun? I think mine is awesome, but that's me. So, you know, that's peace, but like, is the organization fun? You know, ask yourself that. I had to think about that like my last employers. Were they fun? And, you know, it was kind of one of those debatable is like, could I think of the organization fun? There was fun times. What though made it fun? What, you know, and I was like, it was almost more like an enjoyable question. What made it enjoyable? What did I, what built it up? You know, was there confidence in each other? I certainly had confidence in an organization, but they might not have had confidence in me. That one wasn't very much fun. You know, that part of what made it fun? Because if I asked you now, okay, give me an example of a fun organization. You know, most people like, they like to give me the Googles, the Facebooks, they pictured, you know, the ping pong table, the foosball table. And yes, that is the all you can eat cafeteria through that walkway there behind the pole, I think is the uh, beer taps that I heard you can help yourself. This is LinkedIn. I loved getting to go out there on LinkedIn, but this is what people think of as fun. You know, right, you get to play around. If an organization leaves these out though, is there a big confidence level in their employees? Is there a lot of trust that you're there to get the work done? My time there, I didn't play ping pong or foosball, you know, but oh my gosh, I went and ran outside because I want to be part of LinkedIn. The company was really represented in their people. But you know what it was? Getting to work with all the different kinds of people at LinkedIn, everyone I talked to, everyone I met, et cetera, there was this immense amount of confidence and trust. People were there to do their job. You hired me to do this and I'm going to do it. That was like, they had that. And I thought about that at my prior jobs. I was like, did I have that? You hired me to do this and I'm here to do that. And there was trust that, yep, you are. No one came down checking. The micromanagers, we normally don't like those very much. It kind of feels a little overbearing. But maybe because it's not fun because it doesn't show trust. Maybe they do trust us, but you know, it doesn't come off that way. Maybe we need to feel more confident. That, you know, when I met people at LinkedIn learning, oh my goodness, everyone was excited to do their job. There wasn't a lot of management oversight. There was room to try things and it made it more fun. And the best part about that is I was thinking, well, it was enjoyable. It was fun. And it's why do people even want to encourage that kind of free space to roam? 
And the reason I want to really bring these two things up is when you have confidence in your skill set and your team skill set and the organizational capabilities, when you trust your mission and vision in how you help the community and what you do, that leaves the room for innovation. That's the coolest thing about this having fun at work. When your confidence and trust levels are so high, you set the space for innovation. And okay, let's go back to the beginning. If I'm gonna introduce a new word here, innovation, let's go to our friend Google, right? What does Google say? And here's the coolest thing. If you go look at innovation on Google, look at these images. These show innovation is an idea. When you are having fun, you have space to not just be creative, but to problem solve, to try things, to have discussions and say, I am here to service my customer and deliver them value. The innovative part is the ideas. I mean, look at the search page result. It doesn't show a new app. It doesn't show building the next big thing you know, or rechanging how we service our customers or products. It's innovation. And this is why having fun is so important because it breeds innovation. But that fun, that excitement and jumping for joy comes when you look at your confidence levels and your trust levels. When those are really, really high, when they are spread out throughout your personal fun, your team fun, your organizational fun, when those skill sets come or the levels of confidence and where are you at with your trust, that I challenge you, look at your work. When you enjoy the pieces of work, is your confidence level high? Is your trust level high? And then a good analyst we all are, if it isn't, what do I need to get there? That's all it has to do to make it more fun. And so think about that because here's the piece. All you have to do to start having a little more fun, we can start at that personal level. I challenge you to think about what things make you smile? What things are fun? What things do you enjoy? Today, pick one thing that makes you smile. Just one thing, you're at a business analyst conference. If you come home and say, wow, I had fun, or I guess turn the chair to your spouse sitting there in the same home office and go, my day is awesome because look at all the stuff I learned. Anyone else be like, really? A business analysis conference. That sounds like a lot of fun. To us on the inside, all us cool people, right? We know how much fun this is. You know, God, we got a whole day of it. Like Judy is so excited to close you out, but like, can't wait to get to hear everyone speak. Like, this is awesome. You know, so what is it about your job that has fun? And if anything, find something to smile about, to know why you're even working in the first place if you need to. Because yes, sometimes we need those reminders when you're working hard and you leave the husband and dog unattended for a little bit, you might turn around and see you have something to smile about. Yes, my poor dog. However, he's why I'm working. No one questioned about the work I was doing. They had confidence in me and said, you will do a great job. Go have a good day at work. And this is the picture they sent. Look at that confidence. So what makes you smile? What makes you excited? And if anything, know why you're working. Why do you do what you do? This smile on my face I get when I see this picture, oh yeah. Oh my goodness, that's exactly why I get through some of those status reports, because I have something to smile about. But I know when I have a good time at work, that smile gets even bigger. There's confidence and trust even at home in what you're doing. And so enjoy it. Find those elements that make you smile. Find how much fun some things are because you enjoy them. They deliver, they excite, not only for your customer, but for yourself, your team, your organization. Because guys, work is too much time to not be having fun because life is so precious and is truly meant to be having fun. So I thank you guys for letting me share this with you today. 
I know we have a few minutes, Kyle. I can pull up some questions here. Leanne, I know I've seen at least yeah. one submitted. We have two questions, um, but one got a lot of likes. So we definitely want to get an answer for this one, if you don't mind. Uh -huh. um, it is, how do you make it, and by it, they mean work, fun when everyone on the team is stressed out over deadlines? Oh, great question about asking, how do you make work, that wonderful four-letter word, notice it's a four-letter word. Fun is a three-letter word, guys, more fun, right? So how do you make work more fun when everyone's already stressed out, right? Like there's enough going on. There's no confidence in the organization, even jobs today. So many people are worried. You know, start little guys. Like, I love it when someone tells me, put on your business analysis hat. Break the work down. Is there a little piece of it that is fun? You may not like the work, but do you like the people? Well, do something fun with them. It was as simple as what we did is we had a cartoon of the day. Try something like that. My friend, she loved to read the Washington Post. Oh, she found all these satire comics about what she felt our day was going like. If you guys look up at Dilbert, he's one of my favorites. Dilbert in project management. Oh, he's hilarious to see about change efforts. You know, we knew we had a lot of hard work, but just the comic someone showed at the beginning of a meeting Hey guys, here's what I feel like today. We laughed because there was confidence and trust in each other. So do you trust your individual people? And just acknowledge that trust and say, you know, I trust you and we'll get through this. The work at that point in time may not be our favorite thing, but getting through it and acknowledging it. That's why I love that icebreaker of take a picture of your feet, take a picture of socks. You know, show people you're human, sometimes just humanizing that there's hardworking people that are still showing up to their jobs to get this work done. Acknowledging that, that builds the trust level up. That builds the confidence factor up. And that's where you can start to have a little more enjoyment. Maybe it doesn't feel as much fun as daily, but then what do you have fun with bringing in? That's why I love showing the pictures of like my child and my dog is because I know I have fun with them. And sometimes just bringing that in, you guys get a smile, get a chuckle and be like, okay, now let's dive into, you know, making a, some sense out of this wonderful disastrous, you know, contract or RFP we're working on. So those can be some little things to bring it in, but make it smaller. Try not to make the whole project, the whole effort fun. Don't try to boil the ocean overnight. Just try to take a little piece and say, you know, guys, if we can just smile at the start of this, this is a good day. You know, or let's talk about what kind of coffee everyone's drinking. You know, just bring in that human element we might miss, especially when virtual, and celebrate the confidence, trust there of each other. It'll actually make it easier to get through the work so that the enjoyment pieces come later. So just know, not everything may be enjoyment at that moment in time, but there's more coming. Find the confidence, find the trust, find something to smile, and it'll get there. Great question, Kyle. Awesome. We have one more, and this is actually a good follow on, I think. How do you create more fun when you are not in charge? <laughs> oh, I love this one. How do you create fun? And you're not the one in charge. Well, remember, that's why I love this the idea of personal team and organization. Always start with yourself because one, remember a good BA, that's your sphere of control. I can't, I can influence others, but the sphere of control stays with me. So if I have fun, remember though, now that's influencing others. When you have a good time, others start to see that and they often want to know, why are you having such much, so much fun at work? You know, we're stressed. It bleeds over and it does create an environment for more fun. So lead by example. This is that definition of leadership. You know, IIBA always helps point out, you guys are leaders. You know, you lead not with a job title. You lead with that spirit, that essence. So if you want everyone else to have more fun at work, if you want the team to have fun at work, start with yourself and pick something small. You know, I got excited because one day I was like, you know what? I'm actually going to go to Starbucks and buy a coffee and come home. Like it felt like a splurge to just get Starbucks, but you know what? made my day more fun. I felt a little more happier. I would like, you know, they came out with the holiday flavors, guys, right? You got your red cup. You know, that it made it more exciting to my day that at least I was having more fun because I had a good cup of coffee. It was a little treat, a special. Made my day exciting. 
And the more you do that individually, the more others see it. And that is a great way to lead by example is show them how you bring little bits of fun. And again, if nothing else, have something to smile about. Stick that up there next to your screen and go, yep, this is why I'm working. I do have on my desk, I have a picture that someone gave me a present for speaking of pancake mix in a spatula. And they said, thank you for being a flipping fantastic speaker. I left that sticker on my computer because that reminded me like, wow, that was a fun day. That was fun getting a little thank you gift. I'm having fun here now. I enjoy this and it's what makes it fun. I got confidence, trust, and I'm just excited and happy to help others. So the more you can share this too, the more fun everyone will have. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Jamie. Those awesome presentation all around. I definitely enjoyed watching it and so glad to have you here. I think everybody loved it based on what I'm seeing in the chat, which we always love to see. So many great comments and ideas flowing right now. Um, everyone, don't forget uh, at 945, our next three sessions will begin. Under the technology revolution track, we have Don't Get Drowned in Your Data Lake presented by Dina Chadwick. Under the professional skills track, we have Why Are You Not Building Business Cases by Barbara Karkenord. And under the BA practitioner track, we have Write, Write, Agile User Stories, Write by Robin Goldsmith. Um, so we have a few minutes for you to take a short break, and then those sessions will begin promptly at 945. Thank you again, Jamie. We loved it. It was very awesome. Thank you, guys. And aloha, guys. Please stay in touch. Please connect.